Hey friends, it's Dan from On One here. Today I want to show you all the new stuff in On One Photo Raw 2023.1. If you haven't heard, 2023.1 is a free update to owners of On One Photo Raw 2023. And if you haven't upgraded yet, it's another great reason to buy your upgrade now. Now, a lot of these updates are also going to be found inside of the standalone applications of HDR and effects, portrait AI, no noise AI, and resize AI as well. So let's dig in. I'm going to show you the first one, and that is some improvements to the healing brush. So I've got an image open. Over on my left-hand side, I'm going to grab my healing brush. Now, normally the healing brush is used for removing distractions, basically for painting over something you don't want. But we've added two new handy modes, both a copy and a move mode. And those are accessed right here in the tool options bar from the mode drop-down menu. You'll see heal, stamp, and then the new copy and move option. I'm going to show you on a few different photos some different ways that you can use these new tools, plus kind of another great little tool. We let you move and scale and transform the area that's being cloned as well. All right, let's start off by doing a copy. I'm gonna use the copy tool. And what I wanna do is I wanna make another copy of this little duckling down here, this little guy. Kinda of seems kinda of lonely just having one. So I'm just gonna paint over what I wanna make a copy of. And bam, you notice how it automatically creates a copy in its own little space. I can click on it and I can move it around. And I can control the feather, basically how hard that transition edge is right up here on the feather slider. So I can click on this guy and move it back and forth. And you can see that softens the edge, makes it a little easier to blend in with what I'm working on. I always recommend when using these copy and move modes to use a larger brushing, not a very precise brushing of just your subject, giving you more room to feather and blend it in. And then all you do is click on it and drag it around wherever it's going to look good in your scene. So I want to look for an area where it kind of lines up with the background so it looks believable. Now these are not going to work on every photo. You have to be able to move from an area where the backgrounds are similar color, similar tone, similar texture in order for this to work. There we go. I was able to add a copy of that little ducky right there. So now he's got a brother or a sister. Let's show you some other cool things you can do with this. Now that photo was on a pretty small scale moving an individual thing, which is common for things like leaves or birds, things where I want to duplicate and move things around. Here, I'm actually going to take a fairly large section of the photo to improve the symmetry. On this photo, I've got this beautiful group of aspens in the background, but there's kind of a hole over here in this one not as pretty tree on the left-hand side. What I really want to do is I want to take some of these trees from over here and put them over here to fill it in. So watch. I'll do the same trick. I'm going to grab that healing brush. I'm going to make sure my mode is, again, set to copy. I'm making the brush bigger. I'm just using my bracket keys to do that. You can do that any of the different ways you can change brushes. And I'm just going to paint over this whole section over here on the right-hand side. I'm going to reduce my feather down to about 50 or so to get started with this. So watch, I'm just going to paint right along here, kind of picking up this whole section. There we go. And boom, makes that copy. Then I'm just going to drag that copy around. You can see I can move it around. One of the things I really want to be able to do is I need to mirror it. Because I don't want to have this area right here where the trees are going down on the edge of my photo it won't look like it fits very well. So here's the hidden secret. If I hold down the Alt key on a Windows keyboard or the Option key on a Mac keyboard, I'll actually get transform handles around the patch that I'm moving. And from here, I can flip it left to right or I can flop it top to bottom using these buttons at the bottom. And of course, I can grab the handles to size it and change its perspective if I need to. So I'm just gonna hit the left and right button that's going to flip that patch around. So now it's going the right direction for me. And now I'm just going to move this guy over. And the key is just to kind of find a spot where it's going to line up and look believable in my shot. So I need to kind of make sure that the fence lines up with the other fence and that the trees kind of line up with another tree that's in there. So they kind of look a bit more realistic. And I can go in and fine tune this if I need to as well. There we go. Maybe I'll increase my feather just a little bit so it blends in a bit more naturally. There we go. It's a good start. And then I can finish that up with a little extra retouching as well. So there we go. We went from kind of that unbalanced symmetry to one with more symmetry in it, just like that. Now you could also use this tool to move things around in the photo, not just copy them as well. So I'll show you a really common case for this. A lot of times we take these shots with the moon in them. We love it, but the moon is just so darn tiny. You know, in our eyes and our memory, it always seems so much bigger. I'm going to show you how you can actually make that moon bigger and move it around with this tool as well. So we'll grab the same tool. This time I'm going to use the move option instead of the copy option. Let's make this brush a little smaller. I'm going to bring my feather down a bit. 
I want to make sure that the moon is totally covered by the inner circle of the brush. There we go. Stamp. That's going to move that thing around. Now I can move it where I want it to go. Again, hold that Option key or Alt key. And now I can actually scale that moon to be larger in my scene. And by adjusting the feather, I can control how it blends. So I want to have a nice soft edge on it so it blends in. It looks good. And see, now I can kind of move that moon around, that larger moon, wherever I want it to go in my photo. So there we go. Let's look at a before and an after. There's before and after, just like that. You can move and resize the moon. One more example of where copying and moving can be handy. Got this great air show shot, but this one plane just feels slightly out. You notice how the contrails are pretty close together here and they're a little further apart over here. I just want to nudge it in just a little bit. So I'll grab that move tool, make my brush a little smaller here, and I'm just going to paint over that plane. Remember I mentioned I like to kind of make it a little bit bigger. What it's really doing when you're doing a move is it's exchanging pixels in one location with another location. So I want to make sure I've got enough information to fill in that patch. So there we go. It's going to move it over here. And now watch, all I do is I just drag it in where I want it to be, a little bit closer in on my photo. And maybe increase my feather just a little bit so it blends a little more naturally. And there we go. Let me show you the before and after. There's before and after. Just nudging that plane in a little bit. All right, we think you guys are gonna love those new options in the healing brush, the move and copy, and the ability to scale and rotate and flip the patch options. Let's go on to the next thing, and that's some improvements in the crop tool. Oftentimes when you're using the crop tool, the whole idea is to recompose your photo. The lens or the aspect ratio that you were able to shoot with didn't really match what you wanted in your mind's eye. So the crop tool helps you to remove distractions, recrop it, recompose it to maybe fit the different aspect ratio that you might need for a TV or for a different printer paper size, something like that. Now there's an overlay over the crop tool that's been there forever. That's kind of the standard rule of thirds where we divide the photo up into a grid of nine, basically thirds horizontally and vertically. And that's kind of a classic compositional tool, but there's a lot of other compositional tools that can be handy. And those are now located in this first combo box right here. You can see there's other options for the options. I can do a grid. I can do diagonal lines. I can do triangles. It kind of divides the image into triangular quadrants. There's also what's called the golden ratio and the golden spiral. Now, I've used the menu to change this, but you can always just hit the O on your keyboard as well, and it will cycle through those different overlays for you, just like that. And for ones that orientation matters, most of them are symmetrical, but on something like a golden spiral, you need to be able to flip it and rotate it to fit the, your image. So right here, there are flip horizontal and flip vertical options, so you can really get it to line up and fit your photo the best way. One of the things I really love is there's an option here called always show the overlay or auto hide the overlay. When always show is on and that's the default, you're gonna see that overlay no matter where your mouse is on the screen and whether you're interacting with the crop overlay or not. But you can also choose the auto hide where that overlay only shows up when you're actually interacting with the overlay. So for example, if I grab a corner and I move it, I'll see the overlay, but as soon as I let go, I don't see the overlay anymore. That makes it a little bit easier to see what your photo looks like with the crop applied. And if you don't like any of those overlays, you can always choose the none option and you'll just have the box on its own. All right, next up is a subtle but important improvement in SkySwap AI. As you go, SkySwap AI uses a machine learning or an AI model to identify the sky and create the mask for it. And there's actually now two different AI models that you can choose from. And which one you pick kind of varies from photo to photo. There's the original Model A version, where it works well on 90% of photos, but there are rare occasions, typically it's architecture I've found, where sometimes it doesn't get all the buildings because they're pretty close to the same color and they're reflecting clouds, so they kind of look a lot like clouds. So on a photo like this, if I actually turn the mask view on, you'll see how it's done a pretty good job, except it's got into this building a little bit and we're seeing some of those colors are being reflected in the buildings in the foreground, so they're a little transparent. So the sky ends up going in there. Now, sometimes that's not a bad thing because you kind of want that reflection of the uh, sky and the clouds on the buildings, but it's a little too weak up here in the corner. So watch, I'm gonna switch over from method A to model B. So there's a model A and a model B option. I'm just gonna select model B instead. And aha, you see how it's now done a much better job on the buildings. 
it's removed that semi-transparent area in the windows. Now, which one you pick is your choice and it varies from photo to photo. I always start with model A and if I look at the mask and I see that it's a little weak in some areas, then I'll switch over to model B. While we're talking about AI stuff, I'll also mention that we've improved performance for no noise AI and resize AI. We've made some adjustments to the models that ship with it. And depending on your hardware, it could be up to two times faster for you using those new models. We've also added a new preference, which can be helpful for you. In the preferences on the system tab, there's now an option where you can control which processor is used when we're doing AI inference. So the default is auto. We're gonna pick whichever one is best for your system. But if you happen to have a driver issue where you don't get the best results out of it because you can't update the driver for your video card, you can specify the CPU option or your video card, or if you have multiple video cards in your computer, you can select which video card you want to use. I'd recommend leaving it on auto unless you encounter a problem, then this gives you some way to troubleshoot that. All right, and the last thing we've added is the ability for you to control the size of the font in the user interface. If you're working on a small laptop with those really high resolution screens, sometimes it can be hard to read all the tiny fonts on the sides. So in the preferences, there's new, a new font size option. You can choose the standard size we've used for years, which is called small. And then there's also a new medium size, which increases it a little bit, and one called large, which increases it even more. Remember, when you change those in the preferences, you need to relaunch the app for that new font size to take place. All right, and we've also done a lot of other improvements. We squashed some bugs, we've improved stability, we've improved performance, we've added support for a couple new cameras, as well as some additional camera profiles and lens profiles. Now's the perfect time. Go out and get your free update to PhotoRot 2023.1, or if you haven't bought PhotoRot 2023 yet, now's the perfect time to make your upgrade. There you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.